So if any of you beautiful humans are looking to make that buying decision between the M1 Max, Mac Studio, or possibly the MacBook Pro, I do have them both here. And I wanted to provide you with some context based on some of my testing. And as far as these devices being the same, it is of course a bit more complicated than that. And I do want to bring you behind the scenes of really what I'm seeing rather than just throw up a bunch of numbers and graphs because I'm a little burned out on PowerPoint presentations these days. We'll get to that another day. But the take home message here is that these SOCs both in the Mac Studio and of course the MacBook Pro are really dialed in and tuned the way Apple wants them. And regardless of thermal headroom that is in the studio, there is a lot of thermal headroom. But holding our breath for Apple to change this in some OS update is just really increasing your risk of passing out. But as far as specific software, we can only hope that we'll see more efficiency within this ecosystem as developers continue to push this chipset. But again, this is the same chip, the same M1 Max that the developers have had, the same parameters in the studio as they have had in the MacBook Pros, barring any thermal headroom needed for certain apps. And also to mention the fact that this isn't Apple's target audience here. This isn't about modding and overclocking CPUs and GPUs. That's just understood, I hope. But let me take you behind the scenes of that 4K multicam timeline. And yes, if you need the answer, you can play it through. You can watch that video. But we did find some, you know, pretty expected results and also some surprising results that are welcomed when it comes to Blender. And to clarify, this is the base model Mac Studio and the 14 inch M1 Max with 32 core GPU and 32 gigs of RAM. All right, so we've got the Mac Studio here. And the interesting piece is, so you notice like these, these peaks and then these valleys, and it'll be even more defined on the MacBook Pro. So as far as the CPU is concerned, 3179s are just under 3200, and the GPU, again, in Final Cut Pro, I mean, there's a 12, yeah, 1296, so literally just under that 1.3 gigahertz there. And of course, like I said, you'll see this pattern, but the thermals here, so the thermals, 45 degrees uh, for that CPU, the performance cores, 40 mid 40s to 46 on the GPU cores. So that's the interesting piece is that we are not getting anything from Apple as far as overclocking anything. Like this is just dialed in the way that they want it. And whether it's gonna be Final Cut Pro when, when they update it, will it take advantage? Will it push that GPU even harder? Um, again, with that 24 core, but just kind of noting the fact that you've got so much thermal headroom, but it really, for Apple, it, it, it doesn't matter. They're just, they've dialed these chips in, they've tuned them the way that they want to. So let's show you the MacBook Pro. Now, the interesting thing with the MacBook Pro, and again, this was kind of at an angle. So at under 10%, so let me actually just kind of move through that real quick. So at about 7%, 6%, 7%, all of a sudden, we're getting the thermals ramping up here. So we're in the 90s for CPU and GPU. Now, as we're kind of moving along, those fans are just going to continue to spin up for pretty much the entirety of this export. But let me show you this trend. So here we are. So let's let's kind of look at this. Let's see, thermals are still unchanged. We are just finishing that at the end. And you have these peaks, but the valleys are much lower again, because this is the 32 core GPU. So we're not even pushing that to sustain even in the nineties here. And as far as this is concerned, 3,100 on that CPU here, GPU doesn't even get up to at least here. Hold on, let me back through that. So yeah, the GPU is not even really being pushed through this the way it probably could be. As far as the peak watts, 42 on this, on the studio, peak watts, 37. But yeah, so whether Apple is going to update us here, allow Final Cut Pro to utilize this even more efficiently, but here's the thing. I had an export on the MacBook Pro at 52 minutes and 12 seconds. 
on the Mac Studio, it was 52 minutes and 15 seconds. So a three second difference, which was kind of ridiculous. So that, that's where it, it shows that even having those additional cores and it was throttling at, at points, because it even says it was throttling here, that it was about the same on the export. But again, in another video, we showed you how you can play through that timeline because that is very important without dropping those frames and they're very equitable in that sense. All right, now I wanna show you something here where we have, we are in Blender. And so what we're gonna do is render the animation. And so, not very scientific starting it at the same time, but I kinda of wanna show you this kind of live here. It's good. I love this universal control. Let's bring up the terminal. So both CPU and GPU are getting taxed here. Let's bring this one up too. Same deal. We're roughly right now, CPU is 3037 on the MacBook Pro, 3037 on the Studio, 11, 1277 on the GPU, and 1278 on the GPU here. Now, we just hit, as far as thermals are concerned, all of a sudden we're at 90 degrees on the CPU, GPU is at 82 degrees, 84 degrees. So we're cranking up, the fans are gonna start spinning up. You will see that the CPU is getting hit. GPU is also getting hit here, pretty much like almost at full tilt. Same deal here. So the interesting thing though, is that when you're looking at this, and again, using CPU and GPU, those extra cores in this situation here in Blender, the remaining on the frames on frame one, 16 minutes versus 20 on this one. And I have run this test a couple of times before and have noticed that with each frame in the animation, you will start gaining with the, with the MacBook Pro. So the Mac Studio, even though it is cool 50 degrees, we the fans are still at idle at 1300, 50 degrees, 42 on the GPU, actually coming down to the 40s. I can already hear the fans spinning up because we're at 4200. And the CPU and GPU are, yeah, I mean, <laughs> yellow and red. And it's gonna stay that way the whole time. And again, looking at this, 56 degrees Celsius, and as far as the peak watts, 52 over here on the MacBook Pro, and 52 on the Studio. With an average of 39 on the Studio, average of 43 on this MacBook Pro. Okay, so it's already rendered that one. We're still going here, timing this, what I was actually finding is that with each frame, so we're already on frame two, with each frame on the MacBook Pro, again, having those additional GPU cores, at first we had a difference of about 20 seconds. And then in the second frame, it was up to 32 seconds. And then the third, and then moving into the fourth frame, and we were just getting a cumulative deficit, so to speak, with the studio. So like in frame four, I think we had reached something about around 54 degree, or I'm sorry, 54 seconds difference when it came to rendering that animation or, or those frames. You can see that that GPU here, mostly maxed out. And same thing with the CPU. Like we'll have these dips probably in between frames as it as it is rendering that out. Coming over here, same deal. Little, looks a little different, but roughly the same. It, it, regard, but but here's the thing: that is where these additional cores are helping us in Blender. Now, of course, when it comes to Blender. You know, I would still, if this were my profession, I would still be using a PC 
with a dedicated GPU. But to, but to tool around, kind of mess around, experiment, I mean, either one, you're gonna be fine. But it is the MacBook Pro that is edging out based on that software. And again, we are gonna be at the mercy of developers and metal um, and, and, and that efficiency when it comes to some of these programs that we're using. But I do get concerned about folks just waiting for Apple to create this solution that all of a sudden we're gonna get so much more because we have this headroom here in the studio that all of a sudden we're gonna be performing even more, even with 24 core GPU versus 32 on this one as an example, that somehow Apple is just gonna say, yeah, let's just overclock this thing because we have so much thermal headroom. I, I don't see it, I really don't. It's really just gonna come down to that software being able to utilize it more efficiently. Seems to be the take home message here. Okay, so about, it just finished frame three, literally about a minute ahead here. So a minute behind on the studio versus, well, obviously the minute ahead on the MacBook Pro. And we are still red. Well, yellow here, but red on the fans. 62 degrees Celsius, 1300 RPMs on the studio. So let's distill this down a little bit further into some buying decisions because really Apple is firmly planted to making sure that these chips are pretty equitable as far as performance. So what we need to ask is whether you want or need portability because this is an obvious and especially if you're finding yourself in clamshell mode most of the time and really not giving that gorgeous display some room to shine. I mean, I know it's your decision. It is your device. But seriously, nobody puts baby in a corner. And I could easily say that for approximately a thousand US dollars more for the MacBook Pro, that you are getting that display, the trackpad, the keyboard. And if you don't already have those things, those peripherals, then you need to add that to the purchase of the studio. However, I know, I think that we all understand that these peripherals aren't often upgraded every year or two or even three and are likely being used quite a bit longer. So, really then this argument becomes a little bit more watered down. But as far as the base model, I think the what you have here, it's gonna do what you need it to do. I think 32 gigs of RAM is plenty. And I think that the swap on this is a dream and they are on all of these machines. So really the only upgrade that I would recommend if you really are kind of on the fence is that internal storage. But as you may have also seen in my previous videos, that you're getting very similar performance with external SSDs on, a, on this desktop versus like being like you're still getting good performance on the macbook pro but then you're a little bit more tethered on a mobile device and then adding on to a little bit of real talk here in that i think i was chatting with someone here in the comment section or it was over on twitter where i remember a time not that long ago where i would allocate work for the desktop and then i would also have different work for the laptop but that is not the case anymore these are very capable and can handle pretty much the same now, I know that the M1 Ultra is another story, and based on some of what I have been reading on that SOC, it's waiting on some additional optimization. So I just think that that solidifies even more that this base model is the way to go. And it's really splitting hairs when it comes to the name, like base. Speaking of splitting, let's get you out of here. Hang out in the comments, whether you are on your way out or over to another video. Keep rocking those faces, and I look forward to seeing you right back here on the next one. I got a brand new Dyson vacuum coming today. I've never had Dyson. I'm pretty excited about it. I think it's on the porch right now.